Good morning, everybody, and thanks for watching. So, have you ever been overwhelmed with knowledge from people that tries to take away from the truth that the Apostle Paul has given us? You know, people that can know scripture really well. They know the ancient Jewish customs, the traditions, the festivals, and they talk about that a lot. And they try to get you to understand what people in that time believed. And then it shines a different light on what you think of scripture. Or they come up with um, well, what the ancient civilizations did and their customs and uh, what they believed and come up with these alternative creation stories that are obscure and different and they try to cast doubt on scripture as a whole um, and it's some people know scripture very well like the book of revelations or daniel and they try to focus in on that and if you get a hundred people to read the book of revelations you'll get a hundred different interpretations i mean that's just the way it is and each one of them swear by their own interpretation and there are some truths in it and I'm sure there's truths in in this knowledge that that people give and some people quote the book of Enoch or the gospel of Thomas the gospel of Judas whatever it is and they try to come up with this knowledge to kind of wow you so you say man you're pretty smart where'd you get this information that's something I never heard of before that's amazing and then they try to get you going off in all these other directions and um, you know I'm guilty of the same thing I've done that at times as well but my point is is that there is no revelation out of all these books out of all these you can study first century history you can study the Jewish festivals the Jewish religion you can um, go to ancient cultures and study their myths and their creation stories you can read the book of revelations and talk to a thousand different christians and get the thousand different interpretations that you're going to get from reading that book and there's no revelation no revelation that is higher or greater or directly from the glorified christ more than paul's 13 letters there's no truth that is deeper and more obviously from god than the truths that Paul talks about. And first we must understand that this isn't Paul getting a religion from the apostles or getting a religion or studying religion from anyone else. Okay, he was a Pharisee, right? So he was in tune with the customs of that tradition. The tradition of those that just got done killing the Son of God. That's what he believed, and he was zealous for it. He was top dog. He was off to kill Christians, off to drag people who believed Jesus out of their houses and put them in jail. He had no inkling towards what was about to happen or this revelation that he was going to get. He was going in the opposite direction. So he didn't take in a religion, you know, put it through himself and learn about it, and then come up with something better. He didn't do that. He got a revelation of something completely different than what he was doing. He was Saul of Tarsus and he was going to complete something within the Pharisee, the Pharisee religion, the, the Jewish religion at that time. That's the direction he was going. He was knocked off his horse. He became the Apostle Paul and he was given a different revelation. It wasn't something he changed or tweaked or a story he came up with and then added to it with his own personal experience. He got a revelation. And he's the only one who ever got anything from the glorified Jesus Christ. So this message isn't Paul's words. It isn't Paul's religion. It's the glorified Jesus Christ's message given to humanity through the Apostle Paul and these revelations I'm telling you when you really look into them and that's when you know I look at these people who 
come up with these stories and, and think they know scripture and think they know a lot about God. And some of them do. Some of them do know a lot about scripture. But if you can't see how high these revelations are that the Apostle Paul talks about, then God just has not given you eyes to see it. Because there's nothing in all these stories. You can look at every religion in the world. You can look at every creation story in the world. You can look at the book of Revelations a hundred thousand times. Any truth from anywhere, there is nothing that can come close to the revelation that Paul received from the glorified Christ. Because you look at what he teaches. One, people don't even understand it because it's so opposite of what a human being would do or what a human being would teach. And those of us that believe Paul's message know how transcendent it is that you have to be given this belief supernaturally because their beliefs that go so against the grain and so against what any man would ever teach that it's unthinkable. No man would teach the things that Paul teaches. So it cannot be made up. It cannot be anything else but a revelation from Jesus Christ because no man could ever think this stuff up. It's so high that you have to understand that it that it comes from a direct revelation because it super exceeds anything that man can ever do. And if you don't understand that, like many people don't, and they want to go back to their stories and talk about weird creation stuff, and they want to talk about um, how much they know about Jewish tradition and what people believed at that time, that's great. If you haven't been given eyes to see this, then you'll just read Paul's letters and say that, oh, this is just, you know, a religion that this guy wrote down, or it's like, you know, any other book in the Bible. Well, it's not. It's a direct revelation from the glorified Jesus Christ. And it's so, like I said, I can't repeat it enough. It's so not what man would do, not what man would teach. It's so against what the Pharisees taught, so against what Jewish people believed at that time, so against what any human being in any culture in any time would ever think up because it's a direct revelation. It's not Paul tweaking religion. I mean, look at some of the things Paul talks about, human free will, and he completely disproves it in Romans 9, Ephesians 1, 2 Timothy talking about all is of God and then righteousness apart from law that was unheard of I mean the custom at that time was all about law sacrifices keeping the law I mean the whole culture was engulfed in that mentality so no one I mean all these people who rose up uh, at that time were people who were following the law that's all it was about but now Paul comes along and says we are justified made righteous apart from law he broke away from everything why would someone do that why would someone do that who was zealous for the law who was going and and finding Christians not only in Jerusalem but he went out on the road to Damascus, left Jerusalem to try to find these people who believed in Jesus Christ, to stamp out his name. This was all according to law. They all followed law, loved the law. So now, a righteousness apart from law, from apparently the very same being that fulfilled the law? How would Paul get that information if it wasn't from a direct revelation from the glorified Jesus Christ you look at it now the glorified Jesus Christ is justifying people apart from law as Paul says while Jesus in the flesh came to fulfill the law Paul saying to not know Jesus in the flesh anymore if you knew Jesus in the flesh before you know him this way no no longer so the very person that he is heralding the message from he's saying not to know him anymore when he walked on this earth 
I mean, that's crazy. No, no human can think that up. That's a revelation that's so above and beyond any truth that we've ever heard. Conciliating people while they're enemies. Yeah, we all heard of shape up or ship out, you know, get better, turn, and worship God. And once you do that, then, you know, you'll be accepted. No. Jesus Christ, through his death, entombment, and resurrection, conciliates us while we're enemies. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Not people who follow the law, not people who have made a decision, not people who have cleaned up their life long enough to come to a realization of who Jesus is. While you're enemies, while you're sinners, that's when Jesus Christ saved. That's a revelation that no one understands today. So it can't come from a human. The only way we understand it, those of the body of Christ, is because we've been given this truth supernaturally. The salvation of all. It's another message in Paul's gospel. And it's elsewhere in scripture as well. But Paul breaks it down in Romans chapter 8 when he says there's a select few called out of creation to have a special salvation and then God uses that creation to be Jesus Christ's complement. So we're just like Jesus Christ. We have the same destiny as Jesus Christ. And then he uses that small group to save the rest of creation. To bring all of creation under the cross. So that every man, woman, and child, creature, entity will be saved because of Jesus Christ. That's a revelation that is so far and high beyond anything a human being can think of or was ever taught before or is taught in any other religion that it has to be a direct revelation because human beings can't come up with that. Grace super exceeds sin. The more you sin, grace rises above it all the time. And you're saying this isn't a direct revelation? When all of society, all of culture, all of religion says that if you sin more, then you're moving further and further away from God. Whereas where we sin more, grace overwhelms more. Grace overwhelms so much that we can't out -sin it ever. That's a message that humans can't come up with. The two Gospels, unheard of. Jesus gives up his reign at some point. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, I think it is, 25, 26. Jesus Christ gives up his reign. Talk about that in Christian circles. When they say he's going to reign forever and ever. Jesus Christ gives up his reign. Why? Because he so perfects all of creation and God fills all creation with all that he is that they don't need to be reigned over anymore that's how good of a savior jesus christ is so he gives up his reign because there's no need to reign over perfected creatures anymore that share the very heart of god god will be all in all the expectations we have the snatching away this is all stuff that paul mentions that are so far beyond what a human being can come up with. They're truths that are higher than any story or myth created throughout the civilizations. You'll find nothing that can refute Paul's 13 letters. Nothing, no truth that can go higher than Paul's letters. So if you are listening to people or people come to you with all this different knowledge that's great they might be right about some of those things but none of that can take away from Paul's message because it is clearly a direct revelation from the glorified Jesus Christ and if people don't see that if they just dismiss it like it's a, a religion or just random letters or a book then they haven't been given the eyes to see and they're blinded as to these truths and those of us that know these truths know that it's 
been supernaturally given to us by God to understand these truths. Because on the one hand, they're so obviously from God. But on the other hand, so many people miss it because they're blinded. But when you look at these letters, the revelations, and if you really look in these 13 letters, are so far and above anything a human being can ever think of. Because it's the opposite of what a human would do in every situation. They're beyond what a human being can even think. So it has to be a revelation. And if people don't get that, they can have all the knowledge in the world. But if they don't see this, they're missing the greatest truths ever revealed from the glorified Jesus Christ. And they just haven't been given eyes to see that yet. But I'm going to go over and just dive deep into these 13 letters again to go over some of these truths in my next video. Thank you.